PAX West was, to put it simply, the hype train riding the hype train into the hype train vortex of Hypetrania. It, it was basically the greatest consecutive four days I've ever had in my entire life. Now you're going to ask me, why? And I'm going to answer you with, it's PAX, why not? To which your response might be, what's so great about PAX? To which I will say, this joke is going on a little bit too long. Get to the point, dummy. PAX West is a great time, and I recommend every gamer or person who enjoys any sort of television, movie, comic book, or video game, anything, to go to at least one Penny Arcade Expo in their life. I fall into the gamer side of things in both what I went to see and what I played, so here are some of the games that I got to play and I felt the need to tell you guys to look out for. First up, we have Rivals of Aether. This sprite-based art style keeps the visuals cool, calm, and interesting as you pummel your friends and computers in Smash Brothers type combat. I returned to this game many times as every time you won a match, you were rewarded with a DLC skin for one of the characters. As a Smash player from a very young age, it made sense that I walked away with more DLC codes than I knew what to do with. Each character has a different playstyle that will keep you on your toes and make your enemies wonder if they can ever count you, certainly worth checking out. Next, we have Horizon Zero Dawn. This is a game I didn't follow too much until a video was shown to me by one of my professors in college who was obsessed with the animation. He was also strangely obsessed with Disney for different reasons, but he's not here to explain them. Zero Dawn is an absolutely breathtaking game. The visuals are stunning, the controls are tight, and the demo that I played twice was absolutely great. I went back a second time just to do everything again and ended up running out of things to do and went on a collectathon for the last five minutes of my demo time. Absolutely worth following all the way up until its February release. This gets two yes stamps from me in every single way. Third on the list, we have Midair. This hill skiing, jetpacking shooter game keeps you awake and aware with the jetpack you start with and the hill skiing ability. You can choose to fly with either ability, I found it more fun to use hill skiing. Sliding down hills at blinding speeds without fear of breaking every single one of my bones is an exhilarating feeling. This game is in pre alpha, but the weapons and shooter mechanics make this game an interesting sight and will keep you awake as you try to pinpoint other players in the vast array of hills that become the terrain. This one will be a heavy contender in the shooter world as it moves further in development. Ooh, then we have Night in the Woods. This game follows a college dropout who is just a cat trying to figure it all out, but ends up discovering something much darker, much more sinister, and much sneakier in, you guessed it, A Night in the Woods. I think. I had a few minutes with this demo and I was thoroughly impressed by the art style, the dialogue, and the way the characters interacted with the terrain. At one point, the characters dialogued their way into stealing from the game's version of a Hot Topic. The dialogue was funny and smart and didn't feel stale. It looks like an interesting jab at the modern day world that I can't wait to get my hands on. Next, we have Severed. Holy sh**, man. This is the kind of game you would expect some bigger name studio to try and then do it poorly because all the consumers want is Call of Duty and Gears of War to happen. Not this. But this? This is a winner. Severed is a Wii U adventure that follows you trying to find your lost arm. You defeat enemies and take their body parts to repair and upgrade your armor and weapons, and control of the game flows similarly to a point-and-click adventure. Only in this case it's a touch-and-swipe adventure as you move around rooms with a control stick and attack enemies and interact with things by swiping your stylus on the gamepad. This game hits the Wii U eShop on September 22nd and will give you chills as you play through. What would happen if Dark Souls had a little brother that gave you reduced weapons, forced you up against bosses that looked absolutely impossible, and forgot that you're a tiny speck on the screen while the bosses take up almost half the screen? You get Jotun. Jotun follows you with your tiny body and tiny axe taking on bosses that could sneeze on you and kill you with the force of it to impress the gods. This is the kind of game an older brother would give to a younger brother because he wanted to play Dark Souls but the older brother wouldn't let him. Trust this game with your money and time and you will not be disappointed. This next game is mentioned out of pure ridiculousness. Mirage is trying to overturn the shooter genre by removing all the guns and putting in arcane medieval weapons. Pick a character with a set of weapons and pick your loadout with three specific abilities. I picked a dude with a mace and gave him the ability to summon and throw a giant boulder with spikes in it. Then you try and take two points on the map from the other team. This game becomes ridiculous after you press the C button. Your character begins flailing its arms and shouting some confusing nonsense which the warrior I chose had to be the best at because all he did was scream words that would have worked better if he had a tongue. Watching my entire team run full speed at the enemy waving their arms and shrieking about things I can't understand was the funniest thing I saw in this game. It's worth checking out if you want a bloody non-shooter game or if you want to watch your team flail and yell as they take on the other team. Typo Man. This game is already out on other platforms, but it is now on Steam and I can't wait to grab it. This intelligently executed work game with the feel of limbo and the same treatment of death as Dark Souls blends together to make this visually interesting piece of gaming that everyone should try many times. You walk up to the word part and assume, this must be part of another thing in the future. Let's grab it, and are met with it turning into a snake and eating you as it transforms into the word trap. This is the kind of thing I didn't see coming in the game. I am enticed and impressed and I can't wait to play it. Oh. This video is going to be forever long if I don't pick up the pace. Lightning round! 
Brawl Out is a four-player all-out battle game with some smash mechanics that I can't wait to see grow into a full game. Y2K is an RPG reminiscent of Earthbound, and it takes place in the 1990s with WarioWare-style minigames to activate attacks with a fresh R style that breathes fresh air into the RPG style of games. Super Combo Man is about performing fighting combos as a fat guy who gets stronger with the longer combos who needs a sequel with his brothers Combo Dan and Combo Van who ride around in the Combo Van, which is shaped like a giant fist and they destroy buildings rampage style. Momodora is a side-scrolling platformer that makes you wonder, why are these tomato monsters here? And makes you not care as you beat the crap out of them with a maple leaf. Yes, this is the thing, it works and I need it. Bleed 2 is couch co-op at its finest and I will be buying it just to shoot and reflect things with Chris or Andy. Or both! Mr. Shifty. It is a yes. Tiny Bill does it again and 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 again. And I don't know why I don't have Mr. Shifty already. It seems kind of... Shifty. In Versus is a puzzle game that involves a lot of thought and spatial awareness as you shoot to move and move to shoot others. Great for teams, and I can't wait to try it single player. Secret Legend makes you a small fox in a big world as you try and fight your way through this castle the enemies must own or hate you for owning because they all attack you! Echo is the scariest game I can imagine. A castle with clones of me running around learning from the way I play so they can evolve to kill me or so I can evolve to live. Fossil Echo is a story told entirely by visuals and ninjas with guns that don't seem very concerned when they kill each other but are very concerned with killing you as you climb the world's highest stone tower. Battle Chef Brigade is one of the most interesting and intriguing mixes of cooking mechanics side-scrolling beat-em-ups and collection quests you will ever play or have the honor of playing. These elements blend seamlessly together and will continue to do so as the game moves forward and continues winning awards it clearly deserves. Block Ships is a four-player mix of Tetris and Galaga. Get an engine, move faster. Get a gun, shoot your enemies. Get a normal block, become a bigger ship. Shoot or ram your enemies' cores to win each round and claim victory. Okay. Okay. I think I did it. I think I got them all. Those were just a few of the games I needed to talk about that I got to see or play at PAX. Follow all of them if you want one of the most diverse gaming experiences of your life. Thank you for watching. Share these games and this video with your friends. And if you want to see some action, go to my Twitch channel. We'll be playing a different one every Thursday, tentative day, and every Friday, definite day. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. I'm gonna nap. <gasps>